Yo, Prime members, so check this out. We are here to talk about our favorite thing in the world, and that is Amazon Prime. That's right. We all have different interests, but there's one thing that brings us together. Prime. As members ourselves, we found ways to maximize our Prime benefits to get the most out of our passions. From fast and free shipping, streaming of movies and music, and even exclusive deals and discounts, Prime has it all. And what's great is that you can use all of these services to elevate your hobbies and interests. Whether you're a bookworm, a fitness fanatic, or a gaming guru, Prime has something for everyone. I promise you that. So go ahead, explore and indulge in all that Prime has to offer. We promise you won't be disappointed. Time to get more out of whatever you're into. Prime. And that's that on that. I am paging Dr. Sean. I am the, the doctor. Shonda. And I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. Yeah. Welcome to the Paging Dr. Shonda podcast. All things related to the black culture. The doctor in front of your name. We can be bosses and like, oh, yes, I'm that girl and still be humble because I'm that girl. I'm still the number one Christian sexologist. But, oh, please, no, I'm still making my man's plate and bringing him his napkin and his juice and his slippers with pride. Okay? I can do do both. But that interview when he was like, oh, I didn't even know. I didn't even know who she was. He's lying. You're a liar. I don't believe him. You're a liar. You're, I don't and, believe him. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I've seen this on TikTok and I could not have agreed more. The I know who I know who you were. You're lying, but okay. Maybe you don't watch Jim Nexus. I'll give you that. Fine. But the intentional choices of how you told the story was because you wanted to put her in her place. The mm-hmm. fact that you had to lay out all the three times that you saw that she reached out to you, but you were doing something else. So you didn't respond. You had to got mm-hmm. a shot. You had to, I waited a couple more hours. You was trying to make it seem like she was like, you, you were impressed. Right. Then when you talked about the first time that they linked you, she, he said, Oh, and she came to, she came to link with me. She drove like 45 minutes. Yes. Why, we, why we need to know that. Yes. Why we need to know that you told that part of the story on purpose. And when like, he said, I, I'm the catch or I'm the prize. Yeah. 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 Because when he said she drove for 45 minutes, that made the host say, oh, so what you saying is you the catch. He was like, I mean, yeah, I'm like. <sighs> but it's really people out here who like, it's men out here who want to be the catch. Like, <laughs> and but here's the thing. I am okay with. I'm not. Don't think you're gonna come over here with that. (laughs) But here's the thing: I think that two catches can catch each other. Okay. I think that two people who are, because here's here's the other piece of it, that like real talk. Do I want you if you're not a catch? Mm, Okay. So, like, it's the the fact that I am who I am means you need to be a catch to be with me. Period. So I'm okay with him thinking that he's a catch, but he should have said, when he said, would you think you a catch? I mean, we both are. We, this this is pri- prize winning over here. We, like we matching energy. Something that said, yes, she got, she got a prize in me, but I also have a prize in her. And it is because that we are each other's prize. Like with something, some kind of way, use your fancy word, your fancy education. Aren't you college student? Right. Use your fancy education. <laughs> to explain what you need to explain but the problem is it said the question is if i catch you do you feel away if i leave sounds prideful for me. <laughs> yeah. and that's the thing everything about him feel because even when he was talking about how they went out to ice cream and everybody was like losing it because she was there and he was mm-hmm. like oh okay like what like because nobody, literally nobody has ever lost it when you walk in the room. You literally could walk in the airport, in the anywhere in the world, unattached. You could sit in Gen Pop on Delta Airlines and nobody's going to know nothing. And you don't like it. Uh, and I just... I didn't hear that part. <laughs> girl, girl. So anyway, we got derailed for a second. But what? yes. People want to humble black women and it ain't just outside people. I did not hear that part. I think that's hilarious though. But that makes a lot of sense as to why he felt the need to say that. Because that sounds like a 
like a compensatory strategy. Like he needed to do that to kind of like compensate for yep. some insecurities that he yep. had. Yep. To say and like, oh, I didn't know who she was. Walked around in right because of who she is and who he right. is. Right. Oh, honey, when the Olympics come, and this is what like I he needs. I'll just put it like this: he needs to do some soul searching and get some work together work with his yes. spirit yes before the olympics come because miss girl is that girl mm-hmm. okay always been and so it's that, only going to yeah. get even like you so that definitely like, seems insecurity then oh yeah yeah big time and okay. the thing and the unfortunate part about it is that some people battle with insecurity that is allowed to stay hidden or lie dormant because mm-hmm. they curate spaces of people that they are better than. Yes. And so you don't really get to see how really threatened they are until they are in a place of greater or better. Exactly. Exactly. And it takes a hit to their ego. Yep. And their ego gets in conflict with what they thought they were like their yeah. the perceived image of themselves versus their yeah. real the reality of like what's happening. Yeah. And the perceived image of themselves is a falsehood. And it really mm-hmm. is a falsehood that is kind of scaffolded by, mm-hmm. you know, lesser, le- lesser experienced folk that they are around or lesser yeah. uh, accomplished folk that they are around. But in reality, the real angst and a rub comes in, particularly in relationships where we be fighting and all of that because my, or the other person's, lived sheer existence and lived experience holds a mirror to everything that you don't yep. like about yourself. That part. That part. But that and that's not your wife's responsibility to work that out. He should have worked okay. that out before he got married. He's not anointed enough to carry to do the level Come of on. that he need. Come on. <laughs> Um, so, okay, this kind of goes aligned with this, but this is my last question. I wanted to ask about Mr. Because we hate him. I think collectively as a black community, we do not like Mr. At all. But he very much has a story. He does. Yes. And I felt so bad for him. We had to do the both in like we did with Derrick Jackson. We had to do, we had to do the. Right, right. (laughs) I will say that Domingo. I hate you as much yes. as I hated Danny Glover. Yes. Or is it Danny Glover? That was it. Danny Glover is the original. It's either Mr. Danny or Donald. One of the no, two. it's not Donald. Okay. I get the two mixed up. Um, Wait, is it Danny? Wait, Danny, the lethal weapon and Mr. is the same people, right? Because I know these to be true, but I people's names, I get, hold on. Yes. One is an actor, one is a musician. Oh, no, I know it's not Donald Glover. Oh. Danny Glover. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, it's Danny Glover then. It's Don't Danny mind Glover. us. Don't mind us. Yes, <laughs> Danny Glover. Domingo, I hate you. <laughs> M-I-S-T. We don't like him. Period. Just like I did Danny, which means you did your job. But that's also, how you know you're acting. Mm-hmm. And okay, you were acting. And mm-hmm. so just like that, uh, who was it that said, uh, was it Sophia? One of them, whoever said that he would have been, a, oh no, Sealy said in the original one, you'd have been a, a, a speck of a man or half of a man if you wouldn't have been too bad being that, that other, your father's little boy. Like if you'd have let him that be a man. And that is what he was living in the shadows yes. of under the weight of his father's expectations yes. and mm-hmm. everything and his inability or his need to control everything and everybody was to keep his world just so to keep his father proud. And, um, and, and, and it seems like the granddaddy did it to the daddy who then did it to this this one who then tried to do it to Harpo, but hallelujah for having a wife who is going to pray that thing off you and break generational curses because say, uh, so fans <laughs> said Satan get thee behind me because as for me in my house, it won't be so. Hallelujah. Okay. Sophia broke that generational curse did. so bad. Like, did. so bad. Did. Uh, but like, I felt so bad for Mr. when I like did. understood his story. Yeah. He how the way he original and um original and new 
he like if you watch him and there that's what makes them such great actors the way they like their shoulders roll in and kind of yes. like this cower yes when their father be, begins to kind of berate them and talk and all of that and like there's this like this dichotomous like pull of reverence and respect with also get out my faith I don't know what you're talking about with also like daddy just please be proud of me mm. like it it was yeah and the thing is that he and the, when Sealy said what beat you what did he beat you for for not being you like that right there really highlighted or illuminated a great deal of mister's issues yeah mister wanted to be with Shug. The Enhanced American Express Business Gold Card is designed to take your business further. It's packed with benefits like four times points that adapt to your top two eligible spending categories every month on up to $150,000 in purchases per year. And up to $395 in annual statement credits on eligible purchases at select business merchants. The Amex Business Gold Card, now smarter and more flexible. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash businessgoldcard. Mr. would be a different person and Shook, Mr. would have had it broken off of him with Suge like Sophia broke it off with Harpo if he would have not listened to his dad. But he didn't have that opportunity. And so that's what his beef for Harpo was is you're living the life that I wanted. Wow. Which is another thing in families where parents resent the freedom the that their children have. Yes. Ugh. And we can dig into so many layers of the family dynamics. Baby. Oh my, like, even though we never, we never met the grandpa. No. Right. Like the, yeah. Okay. Not even the play or, or no. Okay. But it's we still mentioned. saw. Yeah. Right. But we still saw the impact of how he reared the, the dad. And yep. how the dad reared Harpo. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, we met the granddad. No, so like the father's father. Like we, oh, no, the, even though we never saw like his presence. No, no, no. We know because he, however, how the how Pop or Paul, however you call how Paul treated right, Mr. Paul. Mr. Treated Harpo. Yes. 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 But we yes. never saw where Paul got it from. Right. We, yeah, we know that there was. That land is his granddaddy's land. Right. And a little piece of it that Harper was able to build the juke joint on, you know, the paw left to him. So we know that there was, and even when you think about that, right? Like slavery ended, That's, you know, fair cropping the thing. They yeah. have this land, and now, like, you, this whole, like, model minority, like, good Negro, like, you got to work hard. You ain't going to mess this up. The whole weight of our family lineage is on your back and if you ruin it you know like all of that is just like black men never getting a chance to just be mm. and become just having to do mm -hmm. produce and perform right and it's just right. and that equals pain a weight yeah. the weight of production and performance is only pain it's on no matter how pretty it is Okay, now that'll preach. No matter how pretty it is, it still hurts. It's still pain. Yeah. And that's what happens. And then it, it leaches into your children, it leaches into your relationships. And now you you smack you want somebody to mind you because and you smacking your wife because she's talking back to you like she's one of your kids because you don't know no world other than control. Right. Because your internal systems mm -hmm. are so out of control mm -hmm. that you have to hold on for dear life mm -hmm. and rule with the iron fist to keep cool. your external your external world in in order, which is like, uh, yeah, because you that, could, yeah like, when he was two different when he he was Mister with Sealy, Mister with Shug, Mister with his dad. He wasn't even Mister with Shug. No, no. He was Albert with Albert. Shug. Albert. <laughs> Albert. She, she said, who? <laughs> who? Who is Mr.? <laughs> who, who is Albert? Who? who? <laughs> John, that, honey, that father and the house, you, you let that girl talk to you at the head of your own dinner table and you sitting there acting like a waiter. I was like, oh. 
and the house ain't been clean good since your first right. wife died. I was like, get out. Right. No, no. He like, was that's the other piece, right? That's the other commentary on you, this idea that you can respect your elders yes. without com- connecting or committing to toxicity and pain. Like, sorry, like I love you, but you can't stay here in yeah. my house doing this with me and i'm not coming to thanksgiving i don't want to be at the none of the family functions because of the way it's the way (laughs) (laughs) but but that's literally a product of being in an enmeshed family system yeah right like you like it sounds like mr never went through this process where he was able to individuate and become a man And that can be a result of like, you know, of course, like slavery and, you know, growing up in that era of like the reconstruction period, not being respected by uh, your white counterparts or whatever. Therefore, you got the world calling you boy and your father's continuing to treat you as a boy. Like you're not going to ever be able to like go through that process of individuation and maturation and becoming your own man to the point where yeah, my life is out of control. So therefore I'm going to try my best to control systems that I can, which whether it is to to hit my wife or to hit my children or to create chaos and other domains, it's it's literally a a product of just having a lack of control. Oh, we can do a whole breakdown on that. And the thing (laughs) is that we we wasn't that far removed from, from the whips. How do you, how do you get a slave in line? One, One to two generations removed in that era. Uh, right. how you get to beat them that's it and so what you want to slay you don't want to wife you don't want to because the thing is that i don't want well, even when he went to uh celia and Nettie's dad he said i want to marry first he said, i want to marry your neck i think he went there with intentions uh well lustful intentions first because he really went i want to marry your Nettie because i want to do it to your Nettie. that's yeah. really what that was that's yeah. first and foremost you know your intentions god told you you was i was your wife because you wanted to do it to me that's that's what that is. <laughs> Let's just call it spade a spade. You heard you heard the Lord in the voice of your people. So uh not that was one thing. That's one thing. But he went in to say, you know, I got these kids, the house, like he started talking about work that needed to be done. Yeah. Because for all intents and purposes, his heart belonged to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And so there was never Sealy never stood a chance. He didn't mm-hmm. he, he's third removed. From what he want, okay? He what you know, Jacob wanted Rachel, right? He had to tolerate Leah. So and <laughs> this is the thing. Uh in this scenario, Natty is Leah, uh-huh. and Chug was Rachel. Silly child, cattle on a thousand hills. Like <laughs> she did I like he, no. he did, she never stood a chance. She didn't. She never stood a chance. Like he, she was there to be used and abused and consumed. That's it. That's all. Like we say, that's it. When my husband get on top of me, he hurt me all over. Mm. This life soon be over. Heaven lasts always. <laughs> what you ought to do is mash, bash Mister's hand open. <laughs> they go <on> heaven later. <laughs> But and that's so sad because Sealy really was brought into that family just to, like, d- just to to work to produce. Yep. Like that's it. That's really all she knew throughout her life to yep. produce, to produce, like, and to work, to work and it. to clean and to be used and consumed. Yeah. And she when he the when her mom got sick, her dad start her stepdad started doing it to her because her mom either couldn't or wouldn't. Yeah, he said, "I'm gonna do it like your like your mama won't, or what your mom you gonna do what your mama can't or couldn't or whatever he said." Yeah. And so from there, that's all. Like she all and even and this is why I love you, Margaret Avery and Taraji. But this is why Suge is a piece of trash uh-huh. because you knew <laughs> you knew like that she would do whatever. And you willingly took her love because she was willing to do whatever for you, yeah. knowing her history, knowing all the things that she'd been through. Like you should not have allowed her to connect with you in that way when you knew you had no intent. You, I don't, you know, in the book they did what they did, you know, just a look in the, in the new movie, they woke up in the same day. We don't. <laughs> We don't, we ain't gonna put nothing on the text. We don't know what happened that night. But 
But you knew you were never going to, you were always going to marry the next man. You were right. never going to be with her. Y'all were never going to have happily ever after in that way. Mm -hmm. And you, I feel like if anything is missing just from the story overall, I would have loved should to be able to help her different help silly differentiate yeah a love outside of people who take from you right i would have enjoyed that like i would have enjoyed them to have developed a platonic relationship where Correct. she experienced love without feel like that reciprocity like that that and and to share that's yes. like the second fiddle you right. just hear like right. i you get to be here you because like that's the, like even when mr was like you ain't gonna do nothing but uh go to sugar house and be a maid cook for clean after her, like mm -hmm. you know whatever and like essentially the you took her out of the house where she was getting abused and abused and yeah i believe that she really loved her mm -hmm. but not in the way that I think that, and I know there's some discrepancy as to whether there was like romantic feelings. Some people don't believe that there's real true romantic feelings. And that wasn't a part of the story, like, like not a lesbian relationship or whatever. But I, what I think is that should, there were places where Shug took, took advantage of Celie's brokenness. Yeah. For because sure. of her own brokenness, mm -hmm. Shug took advantage of Celie's brokenness. Yeah, and I, I don't like that. I don't either, and and that's one of the reasons why I love the ending. Where um, I was about to say Fantasia, but Celie was able to experience that love again from mm -hmm. her sister, her children, and finding out that she had grandchildren. Because all she really wanted was like love. Yeah. Like there are people in this world who love me. Like, yeah. I, like and it's the she. Right. It was the unconditional love piece. Yes, you, she that she never she never worked for for Nettie. She never right. like she cared. Like the things that she did for Nettie was care, mm -hmm. compassion, tenderness. Like she was a she nurtured her sister and all and now love and the things she would do for her her children and would eventually do for her grandchildren was a was a selfless nurturing every all the love that she did things she did for everybody else was duty mm -hmm. and i and i wish that she would have been able to have found a romantic that would have added to the story but maybe a romantic love that would have loved her for who she is like because yeah. i think the the beautiful i'm you know i'm here and this acceptance of, I may be black, I may be ugly, I may be poor, but I'm here. And I got my house, I got my sister, I got my, you know, but I want something, which again, this is not the story, but I want, uh, what you talking about ugly? Ugly where? I feel like we got that when she, like her her song, um, and the Miss Sealy's Pants, after the Miss Sealy's Pants um, situation where mm -hmm. she sung the song about like I'm beautiful like that I'm here she didn't yeah, say I'm called, beautiful in that yeah it's called I'm oh. here oh yeah okay. but I'm beautiful like that was an affirmation of self but I want I want Celie to be loved well yeah. I want yeah. her to experience pleasure in a way that was not like Manipulative. Okay. No, that Shug is a manipulator. Suge used her womanly wiles. Yeah. With Celie, just like she did all the men in the town. Mm -hmm. And that's just my take. <laughs> but that would have been a whole nother story. That would have been a whole nother story. And like you know, and but at that age, Celie was like, man, I'm just want to sit here. I'm gonna keep on making these pants, love on my grandkids. I right. ain't worried about. You know, pleasure in that kind of yeah. in that kind of way, but that would be nice for Celie to have found everybody at the table with their man. Yeah, and Mister with these pants on. I yeah. think Mister wanted that old thing back for real, for real. He I, may not have said it, but he tried. He tried. He tried it. He was like, maybe we can go out. And Celie said, oh, yeah. "Maybe we could be friends." <laughs> now, don't don't even. Maybe we just be friends. But I don't know. Yeah, don't do it. Well, I don't want my. If you watch it, please don't get no bright ideas. 
<laughs> that that don't mean they don't still be coming. Please don't get no bright ideas. <laughs> we gonna just be friends. Go with God. <laughs> we I love you like with the love of the Lord. <laughs> but listen. I feel like we can do a deep dive on like every single character and it would take us weeks to like really dig into it. It really would. But I was like just overall character wise performance. Yeah. Wise, if you have not seen it, I think that you should please um, abandon your expectations. If you thought that this wasn't a musical, I don't, again, I don't know why, but it is so, but Fantasia was absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I, you cannot tell me that this was her first feature uh, full length film. Like, e but even when she did her biopic in her biopic, or however you pronounce it, in on Lifetime, I was like shocked at how good she acted. Like, she yeah. can really, she can act. Like, she did really well on Broadway. She did really well. And she talked about how a lot of people were kind of uncertain about if she was going to translate on screen, like different mm. parts of the stage and screen. And Blitz, really? yeah. And mm -hmm. she said Blitz like flat out fought for her and basically was like, Fantasia is my Sealy or I'm not doing it. Mm. And so shout out to Black men for like, and the same mm. way Corey uh, was like, I need Danielle to be my to be my Sophia. Like Harpo was like, "This is my Sophia." Like shout I out to that. I love them, that. You know, <laughs> using their privilege, using their privilege to make a way for black and women. Advocate. I love that. Yes, but like she did phenomenal. She held her own against vets. You cannot tell that like, you can't tell that she ain't been doing this acting. You know, her whole life, like in the back and forth scenes, like the dialogue, the pacing, the, the acting choices, like the, there was only one scene that I felt like she was acting like she was acting. I don't know if okay. that makes sense, but like yeah, the I rest of the stuff, she was just acting. Mm -hmm. But when she did the, the that, two yes. two, yes. that felt like she was trying, she was Fantasia being Whoopi being silly. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That that was the only part that didn't really land for me, but everything mm -hmm. else was just it was amazing. Like mm -hmm. I, I think she did phenomenal. Taraji pleasantly surprised with with uh her sug. Her her is very, very squeak like. Like yeah. everything that squeak was, her was just very mm -hmm. like, ah, like she, she did it. She Holly did, so did it yeah. as Nettie. I loved her added like that added sass to the um, beginning. Felicia Young Sealy did really really well. I think it was a great train. And when they started walking around the table, I was like, okay, the one the one more turn around this table, Fantasia fitting to come out. And I knew <laughs> I knew that that was happening. I love that. Now, I'm going to choose my words very carefully because we stand black women here. And on my Facebook page, I, when I mentioned this young lady, I said, beautiful gals. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful gals. Who? Sierra. Now, oh, okay. Sierra is big netty. Sierra didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. However, Sierra also did not contribute to the film mm -mm. in any meaningful way. Tamala Man did more for me. Yes. Tamala ate that up. Mm -hmm. Okay, ate it up. Even mm -hmm. her one little line, she ate that little one when she was like, not right now. Mm -hmm. now <laughs> Revin of Revin's busy. Like, even that one little one was like, Sierra, of all that, we understand that this is a period piece. We understand that, the, you know, the, the, accents and the costumes and all that thing like they looked like everybody else in the cast looked like they were dressed to be in the time that they were in mm -hmm. when sierra came on the screen she looked like she was in a costume like she like like all the other even the children and the the, the kids that came and they were in the african garb they looked like they came from africa mm -hmm. sierra looked like she was regular 2023 sierra <laughs> wrapped in swallowing Kobe and I could not it just I could not suspend disbelief enough to like that it was very jarring like I okay. was by that point in the movie I was in and when she got on the screen I was like 
It took like it took me out. And so like she didn't do anything wrong. Who do you it think should have played the adult Nettie? Honestly, anybody, any other person, because she wasn't there long enough. Mm-hmm. Her like her her role wasn't significant enough that it needed to be Sierra. And but Sierra is such a I don't want to say polarizing, but like such a, a known like Sierra in this movie is like Michael B. Jordan in everything else. Like okay. Michael B. Jordan is Michael B. Jordan in everything. Like I never, he never loses himself for me in the character. He is Michael B. Jordan saying these lines. Sierra was that. Like she wasn't Nettie to me. She was Sierra being Nettie. Mm-hmm. Everybody else were who they were. And I just feel like it could have just been any nondescript, fair skinned shoot. It could have been you. And I'd have been like, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> like it just, it it just didn't. Beautiful gowns. Okay, beautiful gowns. Okay. <laughs> Domingo was amazing with an amazing Mr. Corey. Yes, was, he did uh, so good. Uh, is it Corey or Cody? What's that baby? I think I'm pretty sure it's Corey. Uh, Harpo. Yeah. You, Corey Hawkins. Yes. I think he's um, a great actor. I can't remember what else he played in. I don't never seen him in nothing else. Let me see. Let's see what IMBD say. He's uh, a great actor. Did you know they had last names? Huh? Did you know they had last names? Mm-mm. Johnson. Corey Harpo, Johnson? No, Harpo Johnson. Oh, okay. That's what it say on the thing. I didn't know they had last names. It said Corey Harkins. Corey Hawkins played Harpo Johnson. And I was like, wow. I didn't know that. I didn't know they had last names. That's Johnson is a very intentional name. Very much so. In the only of- last name I was aware of is Broadnax. Uh, Henry Broadnax, to be exact. His name is Henry. Was- Henry Broadnax. But that's but not a common Brodnick. name. But that's yeah. my, um on my mom's side, that's my family name. And they're from down south. Yes. Mm -hmm. I feel that. I think there might be a. We might. We might be kin for real. No, we are. Broadus is from. There's a big Broadus plantation, like like a well known like slave family named Broadus, um, from South Carolina. Oh wow! And I'm wondering there was, and there was a. um, I think one of the D's got missing or added or something, whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Like there's like a book, like a known book that I'm afraid right. of. And I really don't want to go down the history and find like I came from slave folk. I don't want to do that. Why? I believe that my people came right from the from the place. I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to believe that we, we came from. I'm gonna do my ancestry. I need um, to hopefully ancestry. before Black History Month. Oh wow, that's like tonight. I know, I know. But anyway, yeah, uh What's that being in? Uh, Corey. Why did, when did Nettie get a last name? <laughs> Nettie Harris, Shug Avery, Harpo Johnson. Who? And Alfonso, That's that was the daddy. Grady, that was Suge's second husband. Who I don't know what I remember seeing um, this new Harpo in. But I feel like the other Harpo, Harpo, he was uh yes, yes, yeah. okay, Dr. Dre in straight out of Compton. And I never seen it, so I don't know, but that's he what did good. Was. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. but I, I everybody like he, huh? No, I was just saying everybody was except for you know he did good, but I feel like the other Harpo was a lot more like 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 not slow, but like Yes, I was getting ready to say slave like <laughs> right, right. Like yeah. it was like a dud, like <laughs> yes, no. yes. That was what the other Harpo was given. This Harpo yeah. was given like elevated. Everybody yeah, this, this elevated. was all elevated. Everybody yeah. was like because <laughs> even yeah, like nobody was given like original Harpo. Yes, I ask him, I ask him to it. Yes. <laughs> like it wasn't a lot of it, wasn't that many. Eyes and use and yes and no. Right. It wasn't as many of that in this in this one, which I appreciated, which I really, really um appreciated, which makes it like this Harpo was like worthy of 
Sophia. Like, I mm-hmm. feel like this Harpo made a mistake. Now, granted, he shouldn't have put his hands on her, but he took bad advice and made a mistake and knew from the moment mm-hmm. that, and I think uh, Corey said this too in one of his interviews, he was like, the moment he put his hands on Sophia, he knew that he had made a mistake mm-hmm. and that he was going to commit to spending the rest of his days fixing that mistake. And so, like, even taking care of, because uh, uh, Henry Broadnecks, he he couldn't get himself together Mm-mm. after Sophia got arrested. And so Harpo taking care of all their kids and all that kind of stuff. He knew he was like, yeah, I'm I'm finna win. He did a bit. He it's giving <laughs> it's giving Pap and Remy. <laughs> he said, <laughs> "I got you." <laughs> Oh, he was definitely sitting on ready for that. Like he he was waiting for that day. Yeah. He was definitely waiting. Yeah. But tell the people where they can find you. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we did an in-depth hour and a half long. Live. I know we did <laughs> and could and could do some more like low key so each more. character could yes. get a full episode. No, for real. Honest to God. Honest to God. We as internal fans, since we do a biopsychosocial sexual Ooh. on the whole cast. Let's do it. We got to do a part two. But anyway, so <laughs> yes, I am so excited to be here at Paging Dr. Shonda family. I am Ooh. Brittany Broder Smith, the number one Christian sexologist. If you don't believe me, Google me, baby. Um, I can be found at the Intimacy Firm on all platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, as well as my website is www.theintimacyfirm.com, where you can get all things me. And merch like this beautiful, it's the clip for me. Well, you can't get this one because this is a special edition, but it's the clip for me hoodies, our all new daring discussions, sex and relationships conversation cards. And this is a, a Doc Page and Dr. Chandra exclusive February 2024 um, daring discussions undefiled edition will be coming out just in time for Valentine's Day for Married Married Folk. It's the first and only sex and relationship conversation cards for married Christians uh, uh, designed to help you improve pleasure in your sex life. What? Congratulations. Thank you. That is so big. So excited. (laughs) Like, I was right now, when we get done here, I'm going to let you listen to the questions, but I was re- like writing down the questions and I was like, yo, this is oh my wild. god. Like I like the first deck, but the first deck was like, okay, how do I get the people to talk about it but not, you know, they can't go to bed after this. But this was just the freedom to just be like, we finna get it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I was really excited. I love that. No, we gotta have you back to talk more about that. For sure. Yeah. So love you so much, sis. Make sure that y'all follow her on all platforms, The Intimacy Firm, uh, the number one Christian sexologist, (laughs) y'all. And make sure that you tune in to The Dr. Shonda Show every single Wednesday. That day and time actually might be changing. So stay on the lookout for some exciting news and collaborations and whatnot. Uh, So see y'all next week. Bye. Bye. Take your business further with the American Express Business Gold Card, now smarter and more flexible. It's packed with enhanced benefits that are built for your business, all with the powerful backing of Amex. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash businessgoldcard.